Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, I'm your host Kyle Scully, um, and I have some great news to tell you all here on Kyle the Cadet. So, you've all heard of the three or four octave marimba, and how it's gone from 4.3 octave, 4.5, 4.6, and now it's modern days, the five octave, and occasionally 5.3 if you're lucky. You've heard of the xylophone probably going from 3.5 to four octaves. Same goes with the vibraphone, you have three octaves to four octaves. Even in today's modern society, the glockenspiel itself has gone from 2.5 octaves to 3.3, with the highest note being the E above the highest C on a piano, and so on and so on with other keyboard instruments and such. So it seems like here in the Western world that most melodic percussion instruments keep expanding their range. Well, there's one particular instrument in general that really has yet to be exposed to the world. That's right, everyone. Today, we will be discussing the tenor timpani. Tenor timpani, for those of you who don't know, are basically miniature timpani that increase the standard range of timpani. Talking about the standard timpani range, it's usually D2 to C4, but sometimes the drums can go a little bit under D2 or a little above C4. In your normal four set, the 32 inch drum has an average range of C2 to about B2, with its best range sitting between D2 to A2. The 29 inch drum has an average range of E2 to D3, with its best range sitting between F2 to C3. The 26 inch drum has an average range of G2 to about F sharp or G flat three, with the best range sitting between B flat two and F three. The 23 inch drum has an average range of B flat two to B flat three, with the best range sitting between D three to A three. And if you're adding the 20 inch drum, otherwise known as the piccolo timpani, that has an average range of D three to around C sharp or D flat four, with its best range sitting between G three to C four. Other than the sizes that I've mentioned, there do exist 31 inches, 27 inches, 24 inches, um, but overall these ranges are fairly similar to their counterparts. Now when it comes to the tenor timpani, they can be in all sorts of sizes, uh, smaller than 20 inch, but the ones that were manufactured come in 18 inch, 16 inch, and 14 inch. The drums do operate the same as standard sizes, being that they have extended collars, making head sizes around two inches larger than the bowl itself, However, they all are fixed pitch with only one method of tuning, cranking each lug with a special timpani key. So for these drums, there doesn't exist any pedal for it. The best way to understand the range of these drums and what works best for them is to compare them to the rototom ranges. Um, however, when comparing them, the octave is up from what the rototom ranges are, uh, mainly due to the science and the physics of what the bowl does for the head when it's uh, mounted onto it. At this point in the video, you're probably wondering how I obtained such instruments. Well, I'll give you a little history background before I get into that. So these drums themselves, they're not even 20 years old. Um, the idea was really first conceived back in around 2003. So after prominent composer William Kraft's first timpani concerto, he felt that he would not be able to write his uh, anything to top his first one because he kind of felt that was the only concerto or the best concerto, timpani concerto in the world, rather. Alongside this problem, principal timpanist of the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, David Herbert, who was the former timpanist of the San Francisco Symphony, uh, came up to Kraft and demonstrated the idea of expanding the range of timpani, making timpani go beyond its limits than what it previously was, as it, this could be a very groundbreaking and original idea. In interviews, the best way that describes it is from the Laurel Records uh, CD, which displays both Kraft's first timpani concerto and second. And in this booklet, it states that Kraft had originally expressed concern that the need for extended range tenor timpani would probably result in only one set of performers. Herbert managed to solve all logistical problems in this piece, thus making it easier for others to follow in his footsteps. And besides, Herbert reassured him, he'll be making history, and right he was. Here we are in the year 2021, and my mission right now is to really help David Herbert with his idea of tenor timpani and making it more expansive. Over the course of this semester so far, I was able to receive fundings from my school, and I was able to contact David Herbert himself and you know, ask if tenor timpani are available for rental and see if I could do something with them because I really would love to help him and expand on the instrument, make it more melodic than it ever has been. I feel that the technology may have been too young back then and I would love to see it grow and age very well as it should have been. The tenor timpani themselves were made by the All-American Drum Company, which is the same company that had made the Walter Light timpani, but they are sadly discontinued today. 
At PASIC 2003, these drums were showcased with the solo test titled Octopus for David Herbert. This piece itself, you actually cannot find anywhere online, so luckily when I've been in contact with David himself, um, he was able to lend me a part. And as you can see from this footage, I'm currently trying to learn Octopus. Over the weekend of October 1st to October 3rd, I was able to travel out to Chicago um, from Penn State and with the help of my uncle in the cargo van when we had to load them. And luckily the drums themselves were able to fit in the cargo van. They came in four flight cases, uh, as well as the, the rack that was there. As I continue to experiment on these drums, I really want to make awareness for them in their existence. Because in the timpani literature world, I believe they have a huge, huge potential if the demand is higher for them. And that's what my mission is here. I really want to help David's cause for when he first purchased these drums. Because back in the day, you know, it was very, very pricey for what it is. And being that they're very, very scarce, because I did ask how many of these drums exist, and David replied, only 22 in the world exist. And he's letting me borrow 11 of them. So the fact that there's only 22 of these drums which has so much potential in the world, like, I, I, you know, I want to be expansive with them. So I'm going to make as many videos as I can here on the channel with them. Uh, you know, maybe some collabs here and there in the future with some individuals, but we'll see how things go. And, you know, I just want to make the timpani literature more accessible in the, in the world as time goes on. Again, these drums were not very easy to achieve. Um, a lot of time and effort and money was spent into this project of mine. Um, and I'd really appreciate any support from you guys. I, I appreciate you all that have been watching me for as long as since the begin uh, the end of 2019, rather. Um, and this is one of my biggest goals right now is I'm going to be playing as many timpani literature things for them. I'm going to try to be attempting learning craft timpani concerto number two, which has been rarely played in the world. Only about five people have played them just because it's that scarce of a concerto and instrument itself. Like I said, any support is great to have, and these drums mean a lot to me as they mean a lot to David. So I hope in, as time goes on, this support can branch out and tenor timpani become more popular than ever. Thank you guys again for watching this video. If you have any more questions regarding the tenor timpani, I'd be happy to answer them in the comment section, because there are, I guarantee you, there's always gonna be a lot of questions with these drums, because not many people know about them. And again, that's why my, that's the purpose of why I'm making this video and awareness to it. So be, be sure to look out for more videos on the tenor timpani in the future and maybe some collabs here and there, we'll see. Um, and then thank you guys all for the support. We'll catch you guys later.